The LC is a different kind of Lexus, extreme, aggressive and very desirable. It's a luxury GT Coupe with a real sporting edge. The LC shares much of its DNA with the old Lexus LFA supercar, including an insistent reliance on normally aspirated power. In this V8 LC500 variant, that's delivered by a 471 bhp 32 valve 5 litre V8 that's borrowed from the brand's smaller RCF coupe. This proved to be more than up to the job of moving this car along very quickly indeed, storming to 62 miles an hour and 4.4 seconds on route to 168 mph. Inevitably, it does lack the torque that comes as part of turbo technology, but Lexus reckons he won't really register that thanks to the trick that this V8-powered LC has up its sleeve, the sector's very first 10-speed automatic gearbox. Now, the idea is that with so many gears, you just won't notice uh, the atmospheric 5-litre unit's relative lack of pulling power because of the way this car compensates with such a closely stacked multitude of ratios. We should mention at this point that there is also an alternative LC model with a very different engine beneath the bonnet, the LC 500H Hybrid that mates a 354 bhp 3.5 litre petrol V6 with a lithium iron battery powered electric motor developing a further 177 bhp. Thanks to clever multi-stage hybrid technology which amplifies and multiplies the engine response and delivers up to 10 virtual gear ratios, this is a performance hybrid like no other you'll have driven and it's only fractionally slower than this V8 stablemate yet it's still able to return up to 44.1 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 145 grams per kilometer of co2 now with both versions uh, a standard drive mode select system gives you a choice of driving modes but even with the softest of these uh, comfort selected uh, the ride isn't quite as supple as you might expect from the kind of long distance GT sporting car that Lexus portrays this model to be. It's not an out-and-out -out sports car either, although it can get close to that when it's specified with the extra cost Sports Plus package that gives you variable ratio steering, uh, rear wheel steering and a Torsen limited slip differential. Well, what do you think of it? One way or another, you're going to have a reaction, and that is exactly what Lexus wants and needs after several decades of designs that almost nobody can remember. Now, we simply have to start with this shouty nose section and the way that it showcases the brand's signature chrome-framed spindle grille more effectively than any previous model. It's uh, in profile, though, that you get a better perspective for the real DNA of this design, with a swept-back roof line emphasised by chrome-plated side mouldings uh, that amplify the elegant shape, their rear edges fashioned to suggest the lines of a traditional Japanese sword. Now, all this being the case, it would have been somewhat disappointing if, on the inside, Lexus had served as something more conventional. Now, fortunately, it hasn't done, and there's plenty to admire in a cabin that betrays painstaking design and even higher standards of fit and finish from the Motomaki Japanese factory. Uh, these leather seats are absolutely superb, as they should be in any good GT, uh, especially these lower set sports chairs that feature Alcantara and which come as standard above entry level trim and they're positioned to locate you as closely as possible to this coupe center of gravity. Uh, the gauges are based on those of the brand's old LFA supercar with a central virtual rev counter and digital speedo dial that on the press of this steering wheel button slides sideways to the right to reveal another screen with trip computer, audio, safety and settings options. So, time to try the rear. Legroom's extremely tight and the sloping roof line means that even adults of quite normal height will have their necks uncomfortably cricked against the roof lining. We certainly don't have an issue with that, but we are concerned by the lack of boot space, given this is supposed to be a GT that's capable of long distance transcontinental motoring. In summary then, we're in no doubt that this is the kind of car that Lexus should be making. Something different in concept and execution to what's on offer from the European premium brands that the market's never quite conquered. Most people likely to buy one of these will probably decide to do so long before they get behind the wheel. This model does, after all, have that want one factor. 
as going forward, every Lexus should 